Okay, today we are with Harriet Lenore Buchanan. Uh, she grew up in Loudoun, but with that name Lenore, we're going to ask uh, how the Lenores came to Loudoun. But first, what community did you grow up in? I grew up in Loudoun. We lived on Mulberry Street in two different places. First place was what we called a little brown house for some reason. It actually was brick, I think. And it is where I believe there's a chiropractor maybe now. Yeah. It's two doors down from Dr. Bowman's office. Yes. Well. When I was five, we moved to the 800 Mulberry Street, which is Dr. Bowman's office. Okay. At that time, it was a basic house with a yard uh, on both sides. Mm -hmm. A garage sat kind of back of the house, uh, be, not quite behind, beside, but back behind, and the driveway, and then there was an empty lot between uh, that and the next house. So we had lots of room to play, mm -hmm. and it became kind of a neighborhood hangout for base. But well, we also had access to the county lot there, so we played baseball over there, we played football, and lots of different games. In the is that yard. where the dollar store is now, or dollar? No, no, it's behind uh, behind lot. Dr. Bowman's. Okay, that was an empty lot. Except they, they parked graders and road equipment in there. Okay, okay. And at one time it had a small cannery house there, building. It was not very large, but... Mm. And I don't know what... I don't remember if I knew what they canned or not, mm. but it was there. Wow. Uh, tell me about your parents. My father was William Cannon Lenore, the son of Henry Lee Lenore, who was the son of Walter Franklin Lenore. Walter Franklin was one of William Ballard's sons who moved down the valley to uh, Philadelphia. Okay. And that's where my father grew up. In Philadelphia? In Philadelphia. Okay. There's a large brick house there, I don't know if you know it, mm -hmm. uh, the Lenore house. Close to the train tracks. Close to the train tracks. Mm -hmm. It's pretty grown up around it right now. Yeah. Well, um, what did your dad do for a living? My father was an automobile mechanic. Okay. And early in my life, uh, during the early years of the Depression, he had a garage in West End, which is on the corner across from, uh, catacornered from the uh, fresh, the restaurant there. That, I can't recall yeah. the name right now. Yeah. It's a Mexican restaurant, though, isn't it? Uh, yes. And um, I, th I, I'm not sure if he leased that building or if my parents bought it. Mm -hmm. I do know they went in debt to have it, mm -hmm. and uh, he lost it during the depression. Mm -hmm and was out of work for a while. Mm -hmm. He eventually found a job uh, at uh, what we call Petros, mm -hmm. Brushy Mountain yep. State Prison. Uh, essentially, I think overseeing the powerhouse, keeping that plant running. Okay, yeah. How about your mom? Um, uh, her name was? My mother was uh, Maggie Fowler, uh, Maggie Carmichael Fowler and married William Cannon Lenore. Her father was Joseph Wiley Fowler, who uh, married uh, her mother, uh, Maggie Barksdale Carmichael. Okay. And her mother was. Uh, Louisa Barkstall, who married a Carmichael, and my grandmother was born in the Carmichael Inn. 
Really? My grandmother. My grandmother Fowler. So you related to Bo then? Yes. Uh, did you know Betty Carey? Mm -hmm. Betty Greer? Mm -hmm. Betty and I, well, our grandmothers were double first cousins. Okay. Sisters had married, Barkstow sisters married Carmichael men. Yeah, yeah. So your mother, uh, tell me what she did. She was a school teacher. She taught in various places. She taught early on at Teleco Plains. Hmm. Um, she taught in Philadelphia at the Bogart School. Yeah. She was both a teacher and a principal there. Okay. And she boarded at uh, my father's house <laughs> when she was teaching in Philadelphia. Okay. I honestly don't know if they met. I'm pretty sure they met. I know they met before then because um, she had some letters that were addressed to her home address. Uh, uh, Daddy was in the First World War, and he, he, they were not married, and they had letters. She had some letters from him when he was in France. Uh, tell me, uh, what, what do you remember her uh, about her teaching at Loudoun High School? She, she taught at Loudoun High School for years, didn't she? Yes, she did. I remember that she was strict. She demanded um, quality work from you and uh, the best you could do. And she's, I thought she was very encouraging to students, and I've heard that she was from others. Um, I know, I know a lot of people, a lot of students were afraid to come into her class, but, but I think they got used to each other, and sure. and uh, she was a very good English teacher, mm -hmm. and she taught Latin. She even taught algebra for a while, wow. when somebody was out or something. Yeah. Well, what was it like growing up in the Lenore household in Loudoun? Uh, well, it, it was, my early childhood was during the Depression. Mm -hmm. um, and my brother, who was 18 months older, and I had lots of fun. Um, we, the neighborhood, boys mostly, mostly boys in, in our neighborhood at that time. And I was quite a tomboy and played, played with the boys. And um, in our household, we, we had meals together, uh, except lunches when uh, both mother and daddy were working. And um, of course, when Bill and I were in school, we, had school, we took our lunches. Yeah, but we ate together, and they were good times, and um, we played games together. Rook was one of our favorite games. Mm -hmm. We played with Mother and Daddy. We had a carom board. I don't know if you know oh, what it. What board? A carom board. You have rings, and a it's a big board with pockets. Looks like a small pool board. Okay. Pool table. And you have a shooter, and you shoot with your fingers, and you try to get it in the pockets. So, okay. <laughs> and we and Chinese checkers and different, yeah. and some other card games. So there was some competition going on in there. There was competition. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have daily chores? Yes, um, we helped with the uh, dishes after supper, and. Um, we had a coal bin and a coal furnace, mm -hmm. and one of Bill's jobs was to bring the coal from the coal, the coal houses in the back of the garage. And one of his chores was to bring the coal in to the, uh, I think it went in a bin from the outside down into the basement. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother did not like to dust, so I, <laughs> I dusted. <laughs> That was, those were some of the things, we, and and then we would, whatever we needed to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, what do you remember about Loudon 
down the downtown area. What do you remember about that growing up? What are the fondest memories you have? There were two drug stores. Maybe not <clears throat> not all the time, but Doctor Smith, Doctor Gene Smith, moved to Loudon while we lived in the. Uh, it was a gray house, okay. <laughs> the second house. Mm -hmm. And he had a drugstore up by where the post office was on the corner. Mm -hmm. on, uh, and at that time, and I still don't know all the streets in Loudoun, at that time we didn't need to know names of streets mm -hmm. because we knew where we were going <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and we knew how to get there. Uh, that would be Grove Street, um, and his office was next to the, his drugstore was next to the post office. I worked there. Um, I guess when I was a junior, maybe maybe a senior, a little bit on Friday after school, and then on Saturdays. Okay. There were two women's. Uh, dress stores, five to five, and uh, the one Miss Ora Russell had at the corner. Family fashion. Family fashion. There were two uh, ten cent stores. Mm -hmm. There was a men's store where TikTok is, Thomas Hill men's store. Uh, the Richesons, of course, had the drug store mm -hmm. on the corner, which I'm sure is the most well known. For a lot of years, and uh, we had the Lyric Theater. Some years later, we had the Court Theater as mm -hmm. well, and the Courthouse, of course, mm -hmm. and Greer's, and the White Store was where the uh, I don't know what it's called, where the antiques and the stalls yeah. different right. people have and, uh, on the corner. On the square, what well, they call it, something mm -hmm. on the square, mm -hmm. shops on the square, shops on the square. Mm -hmm. So, um, was the white store? Excuse me. Was the white store always there that you remember? I don't remember anything else being there okay. early on. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I also remember um, when we had the toll bridge, mm -hmm. and my grandfather Henry Lee Lenore worked in the toll booth. Okay. I don't know. For how long? I don't know when he started. I do know that he died in 1936. Mm -hmm. So, and I remember seeing him in it. I I was born in 1931, so I, my memories of both my grandfathers are very early. Mm -hmm. They both died when I was five. So. Oh wow! But I remember Granddaddy Lenore being in the uh, mm -hmm. toll booth. Okay. Uh, how about church? Was that important to your family? It, it was to my mother. <laughs> okay. Uh, we went to what was then the Memorial Methodist Church, mm -hmm. the church that burned. Mm -hmm. And most of my childhood and teenage years were spent in that church. Okay. It burned in, uh, I believe it was February. 52. 48. 48. 19, yeah, the, 1948. The new church started in 52. Yes. That's what it was. I was a senior in high school then. Really? Mm hmm. Uh, where did you attend grammar school? I assume Loudon Grammar School. Loudon Grammar School, 1 through 8. We did not have kindergarten. Okay. And uh, I really enjoyed it. It was fun. We, we just, I just had a, I always liked school. Mm -hmm. And I had a, I had a good time. I had good teachers. I remember most of them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you probably had lifelong friends. Uh, well, Some of the students. <clears throat> yes, I, as I said, I played with the boys a lot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but Ruth Ratledge and I were friends. Mm -hmm. She grew up right beside the grammar school. Yeah. That was Coach's Chig, sister. Chig's sister, mm -hmm. and grew up with both, with all the Ratledges. Yeah, yeah. Then it was on to Loudon High School. 
on to Loudon High School up on the hill. Yeah. So what are your memories of Loudon High School? Outside of basketball, we'll talk, I have a question for you in basketball. I remember walking down, um, what is a street that goes by the railroad on this side? Um, not Commerce, it's goes Commerce by the Presbyterian the Church. And mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. But we'd come out of our house and, and just head down that, that's, is it Ward? Uh, I'm not even sure. <clears throat> Alongside the railroad, and then at some point cross the railroad and walk up the front of the, of the hill. Mm -hmm. And we'd meet, it came from two different directions, the sidewalk up to go up the hill. Okay. And uh, so kids from town would be coming up that side, kids mm -hmm. from the other part toward West End would be coming up the other and we'd meet and go up the, the hill together. Mm -hmm. I remember when the gym was added to the school and I remember the classrooms, I remember that uh, we always met in the auditorium, it was called, um, first thing in the morning for announcements and different things. Okay. And then we'd go to our classrooms. Mm -hmm. And back to grammar school, I remember in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grades, we actually changed teachers okay. for different classes. Mm -hmm. And that was on the second floor of the study hall was on the second floor and the, the classrooms were around the corners mm -hmm. of that floor and we changed, we would change classes. And, and that was grades one through eight at the time, correct? One through eight, but only the sixth, mm -hmm. seventh, and eighth changed, okay. changed classes. Yeah. The other, all of the, and the, at one time the third grade was in the basement really? room, a room next to the furnace. Okay, yeah. I remember that, but, but I, back to the high school, I, I remember my teachers well. I, I, got, I got along with some better than others. <laughs> and since and your I mother was, was in school, you had to get along with them, didn't you? I had her for two years of Latin and two years of English. Okay. And I'm sure at the time I thought it was just hard on me. <laughs> I'm sure it was not easy for her. <laughs> Did you make A's in those classes? I was a good student overall, mm -hmm. so, yeah. but, uh, but I liked school. I, right. So I... So you graduated in 1948 from the high school. Now I hear you were a good basketball player. So what are your <laughs> memories of playing basketball at Loudoun High School? I remember it was fun and I only played my senior year. Okay. Um, I, we had moved to the country when I was 14 after my grandmother died. Mm -hmm. And I had a very hard time persuading my mother that I should be playing basketball. But it was a great year. We won the regional okay. Good. tournament at that time. And um, at, that, at, that, at that time, you could not go on to state. There was no state for girls. Okay. It was, it was district and regional. Mm -hmm. And the regional tournament during those years was held at Loudoun High School. Okay. Almost all the time, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't remember it being anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Four years I was there. Um, it was fun and I enjoyed all the girls I played with. We, we, and I had moved away after I had essentially grown up. But um, kept up with uh, Elizabeth Harris was on that team, and uh, one of the guards. Okay. I was a guard, and there were better players than I was. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. And actually, I didn't play with Ruby McGinnis, but you must have heard the name McGinnis with girls basketball because mm -hmm. there were several girls who played. And Ruby was a year ahead of me, okay. and she was one of the best players ever, I think, at Loudoun High School. Um, Ivalee Campbell 
Louise White Cannon mm -hmm. were the three of the forwards. They were all good. Uh, Marianas Johnson. And Marianas, I think, went on to UT for a bit before the real era of Pat mm -hmm. Summit. But right. So it was, a, it was a good team. We had lots of fun. What I remember especially is that we lost in the district to Bradley. Mm, they were a powerhouse. And um, we uh, were in the regional. We were runners-up, so we were in the regional tournament, and we ended in having to play Bradley in the finals. And we and we beat them. Wow, that was sweet. I bet it was. <laughs> so that is the game you probably remember more that's than the, any other. That's the game I remember most. Yeah. Who was your coach? Uh, Mr. McCall, J.R. McCall. Okay, and he was the principal also. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was a good coach. He he certainly knew the basics, and and at that time, and this will sound very strange if you watch basketball today. At that time, if you touched the, we had both personal and technical calls. Mm -hmm. And the technical calls at that time was part of the game, not for getting thrown out or mm -hmm. doing bad things. Mm -hmm. If you touched the ball and it was in the player's hand, that was a technical foul. If you touched the person, that was a personal foul. And as I recall, you had Three personal fouls to give and two technicals, and then you were out. <laughs> and it seems bizarre now to me that when I see the physicality of. Oh yeah. And I wish it could have been that way, really. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I remember Mr. McCall asked me, wanting me to guard one of the particular one of the forwards on Bradley. She she scoop the ball underhand for uh, layups. Mm -hmm. And of course, you, when she came up, you could not touch her or the ball. That would be a foul. So he, he taught me, or, or he taught us, but, he, but on that game he asked me, to, to, had me guarding her. And what you tried to do was catch the ball as it released her hands underhand and come up with the ball. I can't tell you how hard that is. Yeah. So there were... I fouled a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so there was no such thing as blocking shots then? No. Well, you could still, if, if, if the ball, none of us were, I don't remember us trying. Billy Jo Heaton was a post guard and she was tall and she was good. Um, but everything had to leave the player's hand before you could touch the ball. So, okay. so once after, it's after out. They left. Uh, okay, okay. But. Um, While they still had possession, you couldn't touch it. No, you could not. I didn't realize that. And you could, again, and my memory may be spotty. At first, I, um, I think the rule was you, you could bounce the ball once when you got the ball, and then you had to pass or shoot. And I think when I actually played, they had changed it to two bounces. Okay. You could bounce the ball twice, and then you had to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a whole, whole, it just sounds crazy now. So there's, there wasn't a lot of scoring compared to what it is today then, correct? No, no, no I think our, Last game, I think our games were usually like in the 30s or something. Okay. Uh, for the younger people who who are watching this, describe how the game was played in those days. Uh, you, the number of girls that would be on each side of the court. There were three guards and three forwards on each end, and of course you you. You tried to, and I was a guard, you tried to keep them from scoring and you tried the best you could. You, you, uh, and uh, Mr. McCall 
taught us all how to be in a squat position, how to move. Mm -hmm. He taught us to watch their hips instead of their eyes so that we didn't get, tried not to get faked out. Right. And you tried to, of course, you tried to get the ball, you tried to intercept the ball. Mm -hmm. and, and if you could be successful in intercepting a pass, then you took a couple of bounces with it and passed to a forward. They might pass right away, they might take two bounces and pass. They might uh, get a pass from another player and take two bounces and shoot. It was just that kind of game. Or shoot from some distance. I'm glad you told me that because I, I, I did not know that. I expect there are very few people who probably now mm -hmm. know how we played that game. Yeah. We had, when I was in high school, we, we had still the three on three on each side, but they could dribble as many times as they wanted to, I think. So after high school, where did you go? I went to East Tennessee State College at that time, and I graduated in December of 51. I taught at Eaton's Crossroads for the rest of that year and mm -hmm. two more years. I taught the fourth grade and then the sixth and seventh. So how long were you at Eaton? Just two, two in a part year. Two years in, a, in part of one. Okay. Uh, I suspect that when you were graduating from Loudoun High School, was it expected of you to go to college? It was for my brother and me, um, both. Um, our parents uh, wanted us to go to college, and, and I, I think we both just uh, accepted the fact that we would try to go. Mm -hmm. And your brother's name was? Bill. Bill. Wh William Cannon, Jr. Okay, so what did he do? He taught at Loudoun High School for a couple of years in biology. Okay. And his major in uh, in Maryville College was botany, mm -hmm. or biology, maybe both. And then he went to the University of Georgia in Athens on a fellowship and got his master's in botany and then went to um, Columbus College in Columbus, Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, and at some point he went back to the University of Georgia for his doctorate in okay. botany, and he was um, head of the arts and science division there at Columbus College. Now, after, uh, tell me about your husband and children, let's get, let's get into that. My husband was Bob Buchanan. Uh, he actually was born in Illinois, but moved to Maryville when he was, I think, man, 12. His father took a position at Maryville College. He was a professor of biology there. Okay. And Bob graduated from Maryville High School and Maryville College. And then he went to UT for his master's in accounting and um, started with Alcoa, was drafted into the Navy, and was stationed in Rhode Island, and uh, I, I guess he went to Great Lakes maybe first, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And then we met and were married, and we lived in Maryville for uh, about two and a half years, and he was transferred to New Jersey, and then to New York City, and then to San Francisco, and then All to, around. and then to Pittsburgh. Okay. He spent most of his career in Pittsburgh. Which of those towns did you like the best? We actually liked uh, Pittsburgh. We lived south of Pittsburgh. But it, um, Pittsburgh was an interesting town, city at 
it was kind of a big Knoxville in a way to me. Um, it was bordered by two rivers that met to uh, form the Ohio River. And the downtown area, except for Pitt, University of Pitt and all of that, uh, the hospital out there in that end of Pittsburgh, uh, the rest of the downtown was uh, contained by those two rivers. So it was easy to walk around in the downtown area. So did you become a Steelers fan? Oh yes, and Pirates. <laughs> and Pirates. I still am. <laughs> <laughs> what years were you living up there? We moved there in 19, um, uh, 1960. No, that was to, we moved to uh, California. We moved to New Jersey in 1960. And we moved to California in spring of 64 and moved to Pittsburgh after Christmas of 64, 1964. Okay. So how long were you there? Uh, until 1993. Oh, okay. So your children, you have, uh, tell me about your children. And we have two girls and a boy. Our older daughter lives near Charlottesville, Virginia toward the Blue Ridge, um, I guess it's the Skyway when you get to that point, mm -hmm. um, near Afton and Wintergreen area. Our younger daughter lives in Wake Forest, north of Raleigh, and our son Lee lives in Peachtree City, south of Georgia. Okay, so they're spread out a little bit. They're, they're spread out. Uh, so. You came back to Loudon then after Bob retired? We first retired to South Carolina okay. at a small place called uh, Dotto Island near Buford. Mm -hmm. And we lived there several years and came back to Loudon in uh, 2004. 2004. So where did you all live when you came back? We lived in uh, Toko Village, in, in the Toko neighborhood. Okay. So, what motivated you all to come back to Loudoun? We always had thought we might come straight back here to Tennessee, either Maryville or Loudoun. Um, but what really, uh, we didn't of course at that time, but for different reasons. But my brother and his wife moved back to the farm in 1996 and we kept kind of when every time we came i kept feeling the urge to come back mm -hmm. and uh and then we did in 2004 but mostly because i had family here then sure uh what had changed the most uh well telco village little tennessee valley yeah my father and i used and bill used to fish in the Little Tennessee River, uh -huh. and, uh, and of course the riches we knew well had to move, and as what did a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. So it, it was the biggest change. Yeah. And yeah. Loudon itself, downtown, well downtown is sort of like, it's, there's the river. And then there's the downtown section, and then what we always call West End. Mm -hmm. And um, except for the loss of all the stores that I was mm -hmm. familiar with, right. it's there. Loudon is still Loudon downtown. Yeah. Now let's go into the Lenore family history. Um, <clears throat> The first Lenore, well, you give a, a, you can talk about the first Lenore who came to Lenore City and then bring it on down to Loudoun. Okay. Um, the first Lenore in Tennessee, in Lenore City, was William Ballard Lenore, who was the son of General William Lenore, who settled on North, North Carolina. <coughs> Excuse me and uh, near Hickory, 
North Carolina. Um, General William Lenore is actually buried in Tim That's not right. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Somebody else. Um, General William Lenore fought at Kings Mountain in the Revolutionary War and was received a land grant of about 5,000 acres here in East Tennessee and sent his son, William Ballard, to settle uh, in Tennessee and that became Lenore City. He had a cotton mill and farm and uh, it was a huge it, plantation, wasn't it? It was a large plantation. Mm -hmm. So, one of William Ballard's brothers, is he, is he the one who came to Loudon then? No. Uh, William Ballard's brothers mostly stayed in different places in North Carolina. His sons, ben, Benjamin... Um, Lenore was a physician. Um, there was Albert who moved to Loudoun and built a house down on the river, um, down on River Road, the large brick house with mm -hmm. columns. Yes. Uh, Albert Lenore built that and lived there. He died during the Civil War. Okay. And his wife moved on to North Carolina, back to North Carolina. So Albert then was the first to come to Loudon of the Lenore then. Okay. Yes. And Walter Franklin moved on down to Philadelphia and settled there. Isaac Thomas moved on down to Sweetwater and apparently laid out a lot of the streets of Sweetwater during the time he was in that area. Now these brothers, they kind of branched off right after they sold the farm, correct, to the Lenore City Company? I'm not sure, Daryl, um, when they... Uh, Albert Lenore was in Loudoun um, of course they came in to Lenore City early in that century and then well, actually, um, he was in and around before he actually settled there, but mm -hmm. William Ballard, but Albert was in Loudoun when uh, the first memorial church was built in uh, well, that history's in our church, and I helped work on that history, but mm -hmm. I've forgotten exactly mm -hmm. when, but yeah. But he, he was uh, a part of that and, uh, and different things in Loudoun. So. So, and uh, Walter Franklin was there. He had two wives. And my grandfather was the son of the second wife, Harriet Osborne. Okay. And both of them are buried in the uh, Lenore City. Lenore Cemetery, okay. as is William Ballard. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get this in my <laughs> little noodle here. <laughs> it is Your relationship with um, Albert, what, what would... What, he would have been my great uncle, your great Walter uncle. Franklin's brother. Okay. And William Ballard was my great, great grandfather. Okay. Okay, so tell me again where Albert where his property was? Uh, down River Road, mm -hmm. um, almost where you get to the end of River Road and it goes off right behind uh, the log cabin. Yeah, yeah. it's the, the It's brick, a large brick house. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Uh, the, the brick house there uh, in Philadelphia mm -hmm. by the railroad track is where my father grew up. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that kind of ties ties that up mm -hmm. then. All right, uh, have we left anything out that you would like to tell us about the Lenores? Well, uh, you know, the Cannon House, which is 
called mm -hmm. the Callaway House. Yes. My grandmother, Mar my grandmother, who was a canon, married my grandfather, Henry Lee Lenore. Okay. So we have roots <laughs> there with the canon house, the Carmichael, and, yeah. and Fowler's Mill, where the Fowler is out in mm -hmm. Fort Creek, where the right. Fowler's grew up. So our, our family has pretty deep roots around. Okay. Um, and you said early on that the Fowlers are relatives as well, correct? Yes, my mother was a Fowler. Your mother was a Fowler. And her, um, her father's mother, Josephine Kelso, married William Fowler. Mm -hmm. And Josephine Kelso was the daughter of Hugh Kelso, of Charles Kelso, okay. not Hugh. Charles Kelso, and Charles's father was Hugh Kelso, another Revolutionary War mm -hmm. hero, who had settled first around Morganton, mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee, in what is now right next to Greenback. Yes, what is now <laughs> I guess Loudoun County. I yeah, was probably blind at that time. Right. Well, that's it. That's, uh... All right, well, uh, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me and, and educating me on the, the <laughs> Lenore crew. <laughs> well, you're welcome, Daryl.